My friend, welcome to today's program, and thank you for letting me come right into your space. I really count that to be a privilege that you would make time to be with me because I know you have a lot of things to do, so I don't want to waste your time. I want to give you something today that I believe is going to make a difference in your life. So stay with me all the way to the end of this program today. I'm going to continue talking about the seven things you need to do every day to stay spiritually strong. And today I'm going to tell you what for me personally was the hardest thing to do. It was so hard, but wow, this one really saved my life and it will save your life too. So I want you to hear what I have to say. But if you need prayer, we're here for you. Please call us. We're waiting for you to call. We want you to call with your need so that our team can begin to pray for you. Say, well, I don't know. I've never called a ministry before. Well, let this be your first day. Try it out. We're here for you. If you need somebody to pray with you and to stand in faith with you and you don't have anybody else, let it be us. When you call, a wonderful voice is going to be waiting for you. Or if you feel you'd rather write, send us an email. And when your email shows up in our inbox, our team is going to begin to really pray for you. We would love to hear from you right now. And I'm offering you my series, which is called Seven Things to Do Every Day to Stay Spiritually Strong. There really are seven simple things to do every day that just take minutes. This is not hard. You say, seven things, that sounds so enormous. No, 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 no. This is like brushing your teeth. You just do it, it's done, it's over. But wow, the impact is amazing. And there are seven things you need to do every day to stay spiritually strong. And I cover all of it in this five-part series that comes in multiple formats, and I really want you to have it because I believe this is the medicine you need. And it comes with a study guide. You know, when you read and you see or you listen all at the same time, it really establishes it so deeply in your life. Please order this or order it for somebody you know who is struggling, who needs to be strengthened. Also right now, we're offering you my daily devotionals called Sparkling Gems from the Greek. Number one and number two, isn't that a beautiful book? Do you know this book is in homes all over the planet? Pastors use this, lay people use this. This book is everywhere and people often keep it right by their beds or with their Bibles because they use it as a part of their daily devotions. And that's good because this is a daily devotional. You just read one per day, one little piece a day. And at the end of every one of the devotionals, there are very probing questions that I think are real healthy. I found them to be helpful. And then there's a prayer for you to pray. There's a confession for you to make. And there's a thousand Greek word studies in this book. It is just filled with treasures from the New Testament. And there's volume one and there is volume two. If you have one, then order two. If you don't have either, it doesn't really matter which one you start with. Start with one, start with two, or order them both. It's a resource that you will use and use and use and use and use and use and use for years to come. I assure you of that. And for those who become partners, we immediately send a package of books. It's our way of saying welcome to the partner family first. We send you life in the combat zone. We're not prophesying a combat zone on you. You're probably already dealing with issues. The subtitle says, how to survive, how to thrive, how to overcome in the midst of difficult situations. And I dedicated this to our partners. So when you become a partner, we send it to you as our way of saying, welcome to the family. We also send you Denise's book called The Gift of Forgiveness. If you need forgiveness or if you need to forgive somebody else, this book is what you need. Anyway, we also send this to anybody who becomes a partner with our ministry. You might say, well, what is a partner and how do I become one? A partner is anyone who regularly financially supports the ministry. It's not about money. It's about putting gas in the tank so that we can take this Bible teaching to people all over the planet. This program is literally reaching all over the world to people who don't have available what you have available. And when you become a partner, you help us take this living water to people that are so famished 
for the teaching of the Bible. We're able to come right into their homes, right into their gadgets, and bring them the teaching of the Bible that changes their lives. And when you're a partner, you're going to get credit for that because you're right on the team with us. But hey, today, I'm going to keep talking to you about what you need to do to strengthen yourself spiritually. There are seven things you need to do every day. Number one, we've already seen every day. Say every day. Every day in the morning, spend time with God and look up. That's so easy to do. Number two, every single day, every day, say every day, spend some amount of time feeding your spirit on other sources. Number three, every day, come on, say every day, every day, spend some amount of time in quietness. So, boy, I like that one. You'll love it when you begin to do it. Number four, every single day without exception, say every day, spend some amount of time with those who strengthen your soul. You need that. I learned this at a time of crisis in my own life when it felt like I was falling to pieces. I depleted myself. And I had to begin to take actions to refortify myself, fill myself, strengthen myself so I could get up and move on again. And I found seven things to do every day that would strengthen me and make me spiritually strong. And what I'm teaching will really work for you. I'm really wanting to help you. This will help you. And today, we're going to continue in the next two points, point number five and point number six. You're going to be surprised when you hear what these two points are. And that's what we're going to cover when I come right back. Stay tuned for a teaching you can trust, a message that will inspire, strengthen, and equip you with vital insight and understanding from the Word of God. Here's Rick. All right, we're going to get started. And today we're going to look at point number five of what you need to do every single day to stay spiritually strong. You say, all right, Brother Rick, what is it? All right, here it is. It's very simple. Actually, everything I'm telling you to do is very simple and just takes minutes to do. But here's number five. Every single day, say every day. I mean every day, just like you brush your teeth every day. Do this every single day. Every day, take time throughout your day to acknowledge the presence of God. You say, what in the world do you mean? Well, I'm going to show you. I've got my Bible. You have your Bible? Let's open our Bible to Psalm 119 and verse 164, where David says, seven times a day do I praise thee because of thy righteous judgments. I told you in program number one, that David had a lot of enemies in his house. He had enemies outside of his house. He had enemies all around his life. David was surrounded by enemies and David was surrounded by a lot of injustice. And we know by reading the book of Psalms that David was a man given to emotion and David learned how to gauge himself. He learned how to control himself. David learned, for example, in Psalm 5, verse 3, he needed to begin every day by looking up. That's point number one. Every day in the morning, spend some amount of time with God. But he also learned, point number five, that every day throughout his day, he needed to stop to acknowledge the presence of God because of his righteous judgments. What does that mean? God is just. God is fair. God is right. Jesus is on the throne I may be surrounded by a lot of nonsense, a lot of people doing wrong, saying wrong, acting wrong. It might seem like a lot of injustice is around me. There's a lot for me to deal with. But the truth is, Jesus is still on the throne. He's ruling righteously. He's going to do right. He is in charge. That's what David had to stop and remember. He said seven times a day. This was a smart man. He knew to keep his mind on track to keep turmoil out of his heart and to stay spiritually strong, he needed to be constantly reminding himself that God is just to remember God's righteous judgments. Jesus is on the throne. That's what you need to remember as well. And to help him, 
David said, I'm going to take a pause seven times a day. I'm going to put it on my calendar. I'm going to put it on the clock seven times a day. I'm going to stop. And I'm going to praise God because if nothing else seems just, the fact is Jesus is on the throne. Everything's going to be all right. God is in control. And David literally did it seven times a day. It does not mean that he spent an hour or a half hour or 15 minutes every time he just paused to get his mind in alignment with the fact that Jesus really was in charge. Well, when I first read this verse, I was in a time of crisis. And it was a moment when my emotions were running wild. Ay, ay, ay. I, I, I. I was dealing with depression. And I really needed something to help me to keep my mind on track. So I tried to obey this verse. Seven times a day do I praise thee because of thy righteous judgment. So I tried to fix it in my mind. Okay, I'm going to start at 8 a.m., then 10, then 12, then 2, then 4, then 6. I tried to form this, but I found that I began to miss things simply because I forgot what time it was. But I was really trying so hard to stop just to pause throughout the day, just to stop and say, Lord, just going to take a second, just going to take a second to say thank you that you're on the throne. What my emotions tell me are not true. What I fear is not true. It is not true. Lord, the truth is you are righteous. The truth is you are on the throne. You have never been moved. You're the same today as you were yesterday. My events, my life has never moved or changed the fact of who you are. You are who you are. You are righteous in all that you do. And you will judge righteously in my life and in my situation. And then I would move on. It just takes seconds to do that. But I kept missing my scheduled times. And one day I was talking to my son, Paul. I said, Paul, I really want to stop seven times a day. He said, hey, dad, I can help you with that. I said, well, how can you help me? He said, I'll program your telephone. And randomly, your phone will just give you an alert all day long, a random ring. And every time it rings, you can take a pause to praise God for his righteous Judgment. So he put a program on my phone. It is that simple. Just download a program on your phone or set your timer. And my program ran, rang randomly. Never knew when it was going to ring. Maybe it was when I was at home. Maybe it was in five minutes. Maybe in 10 minutes it would ring again. Maybe in three hours it would ring again. I really didn't care. I just needed that random ringing to help me put everything on pause. And when that phone would ring, I would just stop and say, whoop. This is my moment. Lord, you are on the throne. Jesus, you are on the throne. Realign my thoughts. Put my thoughts on things above. Not getting sucked into what I'm dealing with, but just stopping for a moment to remember that Jesus really is Lord. He is Lord of all. He's Lord of me. He's Lord of my emotions. He's Lord of my situation. And then move on in my daily deeds. And then randomly it would ring again. And in fact, it didn't matter where I was. If I was in a meeting, if I was in church, if I was in the car, if that ringer rang, I stopped. And guess what? Those that were around me figured out what I was doing, and it became a blessing to them because when my phone would ring, they'd throw their arms up in the air and they'd say, Amen, Jesus, you're on the throne. Lord, you're in charge. And then we would continue in our conversation. It is just amazing what that kind of a break, pause, in your daily schedule will do for you. Just stopping for a moment to obey the Bible. The book of Colossians tells us to put our thoughts on things above. The Greek says, fix your thoughts on things above. You can't depend on your mind just to drift there. You've got to fix it there. You've got to take it there. And that really is what David did when he said in Psalm 119, 164, seven times a day do I praise thee because of thy righteous judgments. And if you will do what I am saying, it will align your brain with right thoughts. It will help you put your mind on things above. And that brief, brief, brief moment, just to remind yourself that Jesus is Lord of all, will flood you with divine peace. It will strengthen you. I do it to this very day. I do it. Everything I'm teaching you in these programs, I do seven things a day to stay spiritually strong. I do all of these every day. They are so simple and so fast to do. But wait, now we're going to see point number 
Six, are you ready? You say, well, what is point number six? Point number six is every day, say every day, every day say no to the things you are not supposed to do. Say no to the things you are not supposed to do. And I told you at the beginning of the program today, this is the one that was the hardest for me to do because I wanted to say yes to everything and everybody and every request. But you're not supposed to say yes to everything. And part of your success in life will be learning to say no to the things you are not supposed to do. Wow. Hold on. The Bible tells us in Psalm 19, verses 12 to 13. Listen to this. Who can understand his errors? Cleanse thou me from secret faults. Then he describes the secret faults. Keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. You know what a presumptuous sin is? Assuming that you're to do something without praying about it. Assuming that you're to do something without God speaking to you. Just presuming that if there's a need that you're supposed to do it. Presuming that if there's something to do, you're supposed to do it. Those are presumptuous sins. And many, many years ago in my time of crisis, I was in a crisis because of that very thing. Presumptuous sins. I was doing what God did not call me to do taking responsibility for things that did not belong for me, paying for projects that did not belong to me. Somebody else should have been paying for them. I was just assuming that I was to do everything that came along. And suddenly I was covered by responsibility, 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 and they had dominion over me. Exactly like that verse says, I was consumed by presumptuous Sins, and I had to bring a correction into my life, and I had to learn to say no. I don't like to say no. Do you like to say no? I find it very difficult to say no. To say no to somebody who has a need, or to say no to somebody who needs my help, I find it very difficult to say no. But if you say yes to everything, then when the right project comes along, there will not be enough of you for that project. You won't have any money for that project because you already committed everything to the people you're not supposed to be committing to. You have to learn to say no to the wrong projects and yes to the right projects. You have to learn. But what I really came to grips with was a lot of this was simply pride. I just wanted to do everything. I wanted to be everything to everybody, didn't want to disappoint anybody, wanted everybody to like me. So I found myself saying, yes, I'll do that. Yes, I'll do that. Yes, I'll do that. Yes, I'll do that. Until finally, they had dominion over me. I nearly lost my life. Here's the truth. Are you ready? Okay, I'm going to give it to you. 85% of what you do, somebody else can do. Isn't that a pride deflator? That's the truth. 85% of what you do, somebody else can do. Wait, hold on. 10% of what you do, somebody else can be trained to do. 5% of what you do, only you can do. You're the only one. You're the only one. So your 5% is where you need to put your focus. That 5% is where you need to really shine. The problem is you probably can't do the 5% because you're doing the 85% somebody else should be doing. You're doing the 10% that somebody else should be trained to do. 95% of your time, your money, and your energies are on things that other people can do that you should not be doing, and therefore you can never get to your 5% where you're going to really shine, where you're going to be satisfied and feel productive. You can't get to it because you have said yes to so many things that you should have said no to. This is a lifesaver, what I'm telling you today. You have to learn to say no to the things you're not supposed to do. Now, let me use me as an example. Back in the early years, I did everything. I attended all staff meetings. 
every decision I was in it, any financial decision I was in, any meeting I was in, nothing happened without me. My fingers were touching it all. But I'll tell you something else. If your hands have to touch everything, you'll never grow very far because your hands can't reach that far. What in the world was I doing? God had surrounded me with such marvelous gifts, people who see things wonderfully, people that are like spiritual engineers that can construct and build what I don't know how to build, people who can manage meetings and lead people, and here I was doing it all when God sent them to do it. I was robbing them of fulfilling their call, and I had to learn to back up and let go. And today, I am absolutely surrounded by the most remarkable gifts, remarkable gifts. People who are like spiritual engineers, they're better than me. People who can see what to do, how to structure ministry, how to move forward. People who know how to minister to people so effectively, personally, they are marvelous. But what I do is the thing they cannot do. I see where the ministry needs to go. I can teach, I can write, I can communicate. That's my 5%. They are all magnificent. But I'm also in my slot, 5% that only I can do. Nobody else can do what I can do. Why should I be doing what everybody else does even better than me? I need to find my 5% and really shine in my 5%, and that is true for you. I cannot tell you how important this is, my friend. You need to say no to the things that you are not supposed to do. That includes projects that financially you are not supposed to support. Don't think you're obligated to support everything. You're not. You're not called upon to do everything Everybody asks you to do. In the early years, I thought if anybody needed my help, I was obligated to say yes to them and to help them. That's really not true. There are other people anointed to help them. And if you're saying yes to everything all the time, somebody else is being robbed that's supposed to be asked. They're just coming to you because you say yes, 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 yes. But if you learn to say no, they'll begin to ask somebody else and that will liberate somebody else to move into their gifts. So it's very important that you learn to say no to the things you're not supposed to do. Believe me when I tell you, it will save your life. And every single day of my life, I say no to what I'm not supposed to do. That was the hardest thing for me to do, but I learned to do it. And today, I am exceptional at saying no. But it's something I had to learn to do. And my friend, I've just given you a nugget that will make you spiritually strong. I'll be back in just a moment, and I'm going to pray for you. God wants you to be spiritually strong now and for the rest of your Christian life. But to stay strong, there are certain things you need to do regularly. In Seven Things to Do Every Day to Stay Spiritually Strong, Rick opens these seven actions to you in a simple, powerful way so you can easily put them into practice in your own spiritual life. In this five-part series, Rick will teach you the importance of starting out every day with God, the importance of a daily intake of the Bible into your life, the importance of prayer every morning before you do anything else, the importance of having quiet time to reflect every day. Available in digital or physical formats, starting at just $10, you'll be so glad you invested in this practical and powerful series. You can also order sparkling gems from the Greek Volumes 1 and 2. Each volume explores more than 1,000 in-depth Greek word studies, unlocking brilliant treasures within God's Word that will deepen your biblical understanding and show you how to live an intimate, uncompromising life with God. Get one or both of these valuable resources today. Sparkling Gems 1 for $40 and Sparkling Gems 2 for just $45. Don't miss this special offer. This series, Seven Things to Do Every Day to Stay Spiritually Strong and Sparkling Gems from the Greek Volume 1 or 2. Call the number on your screen now or go to renner.org to order. Call or go online now. My name is Joel Renner, coming to you from Moscow, Russia. And I want to say thank you for watching today and thank you for your support. It's because of ministry partners like you that we're able to distribute quality Bible teaching around the world. And because of your support, we're not only able to air these programs by television, 
we're also able to translate Christian books into other languages. Because of your financial support, people in areas who have no Christian teaching of any kind in places where getting a Bible is very difficult, we have been able to distribute millions of these Christian teachings around the world. The Bible says if you know the truth, it will set you free. And we have seen this happen over and over again. We have received thousands of testimonies of how these books we've distributed have dramatically changed people's lives. This is all because of the generous support of our partners, partners like you. Will you consider joining this vision today? Would you consider becoming a partner with us right now? When you do, your help allows us to reach more people with quality Bible teaching from God's Word. With your help together, we can take the gospel of Christ both to the nearby world and to the ends of the earth. That's the vision. Your gift of any size will support these essential and urgent work of getting the Bible and Christian resources into the hands of people who don't have access to it. Please call right now or go online to renner.org. Through your generous support, we can continue to make a huge difference in people's lives. Has this helped you today? I hope it has. My intention has been to come right into your space and bring you something that will help you stay spiritually strong. You really can be strong now and you can be strong for years and years to come. But to stay strong, you've got to practice good spiritual health. You need to do seven things every day to stay spiritually strong. It's what I do. And if you'll do those seven things, it will make you strong now and it will keep you in the race for years and years and years. You'll be strong all the way to the end. That's why I want you to have my series, which is called Seven Things to Do to Stay Strong. You've got to do these things every day. My friend, please get this and listen to it and listen to it and listen to it. It comes with a wonderful study guide. The two of them together are just dynamite. You'll see it. You'll hear it. You'll read it. You'll really get it into you. This is medicine that will save your life. We're also offering you right now my books, Sparkling Gems from the Greek, number one, and Sparkling Gems from the Greek, number two. Please order these. If you don't have these yet, why don't you have them? You need to order them. These books, will get them right to you. And I know that when you get them, wow, you're going to say, why in the world did it take me so long to order spark Sparkling Gems? You will just devour it every day. But Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus that today we have seen that we need to say no to the things that we're supposed to say no to and that we're to stop throughout the day to acknowledge your presence. And Holy Spirit, I ask you to help us put this teaching into practice in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. I have so thoroughly enjoyed being with you today, but I'll be back again tomorrow where we're going to wrap this up. We're going to see point number seven. But until then, remember Ecclesiastes 8.4, where the word of a king is, there is power. Thank you for watching this broadcast. For more information on product resources or to learn how you can partner with this ministry, please connect with us at renner.org. Also, please be sure to visit us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram.